news alert. The special counsel in the Hunter Biden investigation says he intends to indict the president's son on a federal gun charge later this month. It's the latest turn of events in the case after Hunter's plea deal completely collapsed. You are watching Fox and Friends First here on a Thursday morning. I'm Todd Pyle. And I'm Ashley Sturmeyer for Carly Shimkus. This means Hunter Biden could be tangled up in a criminal trial at a critical time in his father's re-election campaign. Brooke Singman has more. Good morning, Brooke. Hey, good morning, guys. Hunter Biden is expected to be indicted on a federal gun charge by the end of the month. Now, that is what special counsel David Weiss's team told a U.S. district judge yesterday, although the exact charges there are unclear. Now, all of this comes a month after the first son's sweetheart plea deal fell apart. Now, this deal would have protected Hunter from serving jail time for allegedly lying about his sobriety on a federal form when buying a gun back in 2018. And that charge could land him 10 years behind bars. Now, now, at the same time, House Republicans are demanding Hunter's legal team turn over all records of communications with the Justice Department related to that collapsed plea deal. Now, they are warning that failure to produce those documents could result in Hunter and his lawyers being called to testify before Congress. This is House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer accuses Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas and Attorney General Merrick Garland of helping to cover for Hunter Biden. Listen. We know Merrick Garland has told the National Archives not to cooperate with us. We know that uh, just this week there were F there were Secret Service agents that who were working with us on trying to identify the people who tipped off the Biden legal team that the IRS was fixing to knock on the door. And uh, our sources at the Secret Service say that Mayorkas called them to tell them to stop cooperating with Comer and the Oversight Committee. So Mayorkas and Merrick Garland are part of the cover-up. These are the two arguably highest-ranking people in the Biden administration. Yeah, guys, and as for that possible gun charge, we actually first reported on the potential for this back in 2021, so it'll be interesting to see what special counsel Weiss brings or indicts Hunter for, and we'll also see if Mayorkas actually complies with that subpoena that Comer issued earlier this week. A guys. lot of questions, Brooke. Thank you. Let's bring in Mark Smith, a constitutional attorney and former member of President Trump's transition team, to try and answer some of them. And, Mark, look, obviously the gun charge is today's headline because it is the newsmaking thing, but isn't the real story how this all relates to the pro, um, to the defense team's attempt to resurrect the plea deal that they say is still in effect in some parts? Absolutely, Todd. This is a very big deal, and I don't think people recognize it just how big of a deal this is. Keep in mind that Hunter Biden apparently is going to be indicted on a couple different gun charges, probably one for lying on a form 4473 and the other for possessing a firearm while a, being a user of an illegal substance. What that's going to trigger, Todd, is going to be a series of defenses raised by Hunter Biden's legal team. And the one they've already flagged is that their view is, despite the fact that the federal judge in Delaware rejected the global plea deal, their argument is this diversion agreement is still in place. The reason why that's so important is you're essentially going to have, Todd, in the Hunter Biden litigation, a question of whether or not this agreement between the Department of Justice and Hunter Biden is binding. That is going to be a standalone litigation. The reason why that's so dangerous to the Biden uh, presidency, frankly, is because they're going to have to get into what did the parties understand. That's going to require likely discovery and understanding of where the Department of Justice was coming, what did they expect, what did those negotiations consist of. And so to the extent there's something being hidden here about this alleged sweetheart deal, it's going to be made public in a way that would not otherwise because it's going to be central to this question of whether or not this Hunter Biden plea deal is in fact binding. So this information internal to the Department of Justice is likely going to see uh, the courtroom in a way that people were not expecting. That said, Mark, there is still a lot of skepticism about the motives behind bringing this gun charge. Let's start off with Jonathan Turley. Whatever Hunter Biden did or did not do, it's unlikely he's going to be punished to the full extent of the law. But in the end, that's not the main problem. The main problem is what was done to protect him from the law and what is still being done to do so. Then you have Ways and Means Chair Jason Smith saying this is another diversion from the real crimes with regard to Hunter, which are the tax crimes. Your thoughts? 
Well, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. But there's a political component here, Todd, as to what happened and how this came about is certainly a political question. But again, I actually think this may turn into a legal question in the courtroom because, again, the motives, the intent of the parties as to whether or not the Department of Justice agreed to really uh, not bring any of these gun or other related charges, this is all going to be subject to this fight that Hunter Biden is raising that says, that, look, we have an agreement, Department of Justice. It did not require the judge to sign off on this, and this is binding. And that's going to require an investigation by the court, by the judge, as to whether or not that's true. And that's going to get into all these details about how this agreement came about. And that could very well include testimony from Department of Justice officials, the sorts of things that Congress might be looking to get. But it may actually come out in this hearing involving whether or not this agreement is indeed binding. Meantime, a watchdog group is suing to keep Donald Trump's name off the 2024 presidential primary ballot in Colorado. Talked about this earlier in the week that this could happen. It is now happening. They say they're going to bring suits in other states, all under the guise of the 14th Amendment, saying this disqualifies Trump. You're the con law expert. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's a stretch. First of all, keep in mind that Donald Trump was already impeached. The second impeachment uh, trial, Todd, involved whether or not he was involved in a quote unquote insurrection, and he was acquitted, right? He was exonerated. So, right off the bat, uh, factually, it looks like these kinds of arguments that he should not be. Uh, on the ballot fail just factually. Beyond that, yes, you have legal issues as to what it means. But keep in mind, it's kind of ironic that a lot of the same people that say democracy is the most important value in the society are the same ones that say that the we, the people, should not have a say as to whether or not Toronto, Donald Trump becomes the next president or the Republican nominee. It should be decided by really bureaucrats and secretaries of state. So it's a little bit ironic that the, many of those that support democracy want to take democracy away when it comes to Donald Trump. But at the end of the day, I think legally, uh, it's not not going to succeed. I think it's a good, uh, you know, it's a pub public relations thing to talk about the 14th Amendment. But at the end of the day, I think that the Republican voters are going to have the chance to vote for Donald yeah. Trump or against Donald Trump. He will make the ballot that I don't think this uh, challenge will work. And I think if uh, Donald Trump's defense team wants to play dirty on this, call Jack Smith to the stand because he did not charge Trump with insurrection. That shows he does not feel an insurrection was there. That really hurts the arguments if you're bringing these cases like uh, the one in Colorado. Thank you so much, Mark. Appreciate your time as always.